In the late 80s and early 90s, New York City was suffering from a crack epidemic. And at the time, my father was alive and he and I began to think about creating a nurturing, supportive environment for what we knew would be a generation of young people who would need that. That was the origins of the HOPE program. So, where he is, these are white boxes going over there, Felix. Yeah. Those are blues. Okay, so we're supposed to have 10. One, two, three. The HOPE program stands for Healthcare Offers Permanent Employment. The goal is to bring intellectually disabled students into a workforce environment and teach them work skills so they could be employable. One of the great benefits is that we're training young people while they're in high school. We're going to go over some budgeting terms. I know that Tam, Ty... They're in school here on campus with New York City Board of Education teachers. The program is pretty unique in that it gives them the ability to learn to conduct themselves in a professional manner. It puts them in a category where there's foundational skills that they can take with them and move on to the next level. Mail delivery. When I was younger, I didn't know that I would be having a job. So when I start working, I was like, oh my God, I'm really doing this. Just put your mindset and go there and do what you gotta do. Don't let nobody stop you. I'm mostly working with the engineering guys. I'm working with floors and carpets, walls. Before I came here, I didn't think there was much for me. Having a disability, there's limitations to what you can do. And there's some opportunities that you cannot have. But when this door opened, I felt like that was a blessing. That was a blessing for me because I know there's hope for me. Hi, Marlene. Hello, my dear. <laughs> this is for you. Thank you very much. How are you doing today? Mm -hmm. Question for you, I forgot. What time is graduation on Friday? I'm not looking forward to it because I'm not ready to leave yet. Well, I know. Well, it's the next step. Step up. Yeah. The idea of creating an intergenerational programs has been something that the Hebrew home has done for decades. There's this resident. Every time I see her, she makes me smile. We have like this close bond. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to take you to the art studio. She calls me her daughter. She feels like a second mom to me. Soon. <laughs> this was an opportunity to do it in a much more formalized way. But the Red Sox, years back, they, they've always had great players, always. Yastrzemski, Ted Williams, uh, all of them. We would use the rich resource of the residents as a source of support with a whole generation of young people who needed that kind of nurturing. The intergenerational component is absolutely critical on both sides, but especially for the students. I think we learn a great deal from the Hope students. I think they learn and we learn. <laughs> Goodbye, my dear. I'll see you tomorrow. When they graduate this program, the options are either they're going on to another program after us, or they're going into employment. I have to tell you, I have a lot of mixed feelings about this day because we've watched you grow up over these last few years. It is bittersweet. Many of them want to stay. They get so comfortable here, they feel nurtured, they know how much they've grown, their confidence is soaring, but that's the environment that's been created here. Every single person that they interact okay. with on this campus understands how special this program is. In our society, work defines who we are. If a young person has no future, then their whole identity and sense of purpose and mission is lost. Here, we're giving them work, and it's meaningful work. All of a sudden, one sees the blossoming of a young person who realizes I'm needed. The work that I'm doing is helping older adults to live a more meaningful life. This gives our young people in the HOPE program meaning and purpose and a sense of belonging that nothing else seems to do right now.